Hello, sports fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. And I'm going to recap my week one picks for the XFL. And I'm going to preview my picks for week two of the XFL right after this. <laughs> Well, here we are, week two of the XFL. Week one is in the books. And guess what? I was, read it, I was three and one. The only game I got wrong was the Dallas game, I believe. So, three and one in week one, uh, going with all the home teams. My general impression of the uh, league is that... Uh, um, I mean, the play is not quite up to par just yet, um, I wouldn't say, by a lot of teams and a lot of players. But I think if they stay serious about it and they, um, and they keep uh, plugging away, I think things will get better. I mean, I watched the DC Defender game, and one thing that struck me in that game is all of the tipped passes. Uh, that the quarterbacks, you know, the passes that the quarterbacks were having tipped either right in front of them or at the line. Uh, I mean, there was way too many of those than there should have been. Um, so, but I think, you know, things like that, you know, and there was a little bit of sloppy play here and there. Um, pretty bad mistakes um, were made by Seattle in that game against the defenders. So, um you know, I, I think things like that will get cleaned up as the teams play together as a team uh, further into the season. Um, so I would look for that type of thing to get um, to, to improve. So that leaves us to discuss week two of the XFL. Um, Saturday, the Saturday slate will be the New York Guardians at D.C., at 2 p.m. on ABC. That's Saturday, February uh, 15th. And then the 5 p.m. game will be Tampa Bay at Seattle. So in those games, I'm going to go with D.C. in the first game against New York. D.C. And then in the second game, I'm going to go with Seattle at home. Um, they... They gave the defenders quite a game um, until right near the end where they made just too many mistakes. Um, but Tampa Bay looked terrible. So um, I'm going to go with Seattle in that game. On Sunday, 2 16, February 16th, the first game will be Dallas at LA at 3 p.m. on ABC. And then uh, the second game will be the St. Louis Battlehawks at the Houston Roughnecks at 6 p.m. on FS1. Now, in those games, I'm going to go with uh, Dallas in the first game over L.A. at 3 p.m., even though they're on the road. And then in the second game, I'm going to go with the Houston Roughnecks at home against the Battlehawks, even though... The Battle Hawks look pretty good um, in beating uh, Dallas. I think they beat Dallas in week one. So I'm going to go with that. Um, and so that's my, uh, you know, that's my call and I'm sticking to that. So uh, what did you guys think of the uh, XFL in week one? I'd be interested to hear what everybody out there thinks. Um... Like I said, some of the play was a little sloppy, but I think a lot of that can be cleaned up. I liked some of the new rules, the way they looked, like the uh, kickoff, with the kicker being all alone at his own, like, 35 or something and kicking off. And then both teams line up at the 30 and 35 um, on the opposite side of the field 
five yards apart from each other and nobody can move until the uh, the kick returner catches the ball I thought that was a that was pretty cool and I like how it works with the extra point where you have uh, different point values depending on how far out you go and try it and um, and that you have to try to get it into the end zone to get the extra point I think that's adding a, lot, a lot of excitement to the game and the fact that the clock keeps moving I liked a lot of the new I like the way of the new look you know the, a lot, how a lot of the new rules make the game look yeah, it's very interesting and uh, and who knows maybe we'll see the NFL adopt some of them later uh, but yeah I mean, I liked it in week one. The only thing I didn't like was all of the talking to the players um, on the sidelines after something good or something bad. Like if a player, if the quarterback got picked off, they go right to the quarterback on the sidelines and they talk to him, what happened on that? Or they go right to the coach and they say, well, you know, what happened? Like they do it like all through the game. It's not just like coming out for the half or at the start of the game. They do it all through the game, talking to the players after big plays, after fumble recoveries, after whatever. And that kind of, um, I didn't like that look. I mean, to me, that looks a lot like the, uh, a lot like the Pro Bowl. I mean, not the play on the field, but the way that the Pro Bowl is set up. That's how they they do it at the Pro Bowl, you know, something happens and then they go and they're constantly talking to players on the sidelines. They need to cut that out. But that's not anything that has to do with the players um, or the quality of play. It's just the networks. And I think they need to clean that up a little bit and not do that. Because you don't do that. You don't go down, like when the Eagles are playing the Redskins, you don't go down on the field every time something big happens and talk to the player involved. So, you know, don't do it here. Don't do it in the XFL. I mean, I understand these players, in a way, are auditioning for NFL teams and NFL spots, but still, I mean, I, I didn't like that. That's the only thing I didn't like, and that's really the network's thing. It's, it's not, you know, again, it's not the, the players or the league. But, um, yeah, I liked it. So let me know what you think in the comments. Um, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't, because I got a lot of good content like this coming up. So, um, looking forward to talking with you later. But those are my picks, and that's my recap of week one. And it's going to be Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.